Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's going to have a great day. Thank you all for watching and being part of the channel, subscribing, and for some of you guys saying subscribe to my original channel for over five years. That channel has been resurrected by YouTube. The YouTube gods have forgiven us and allowed that channel to come back. And it is amazing because I'm going through and I'm finding all kinds of videos from where I first began. Because as I always say, if you don't know where you come from, you don't know where you're going. And it's great to kind of go back through and look and see where I started and how it was built and everything else. And um, to know that the people were still subscribed is still an amazing thing to me. I've truly been blessed here on YouTube. So speaking of blessings, tomorrow starts the NFL season. Tomorrow starts the NFL season. I don't know about you. I, I, I don't know if you're excited yet or not. I don't know if it's sunk in, but the NFL season is upon us. And it's great to finally get that bad taste of Green Bay in the rearview mirror and see if we can start this party all over with. I'm ready for it. Now, I want to, you know, I'm a YouTuber. I am a YouTuber here that's a diehard Dallas Cowboy fan. I am Joe the fan. Do I get some things right? Sure. Do I get some things wrong? Sure. But I can say that about Mike Greenberg. I can say it about Adam Schefter. I can say it about Ian Rappaport, okay? I can say that about pretty much everybody because nobody is right when it comes to football. Things happen that just don't make any sense. Ryan Leaf being a bust doesn't make sense. Trey Lance not working out doesn't make sense. Dak Prescott falling to the fourth round doesn't make sense. But yet these are all things. Uh, Eagles winning a Super Bowl doesn't make sense. All of these things are basically hypothetical, you know? And so it's amazing to me how people get bent out of shape by things that I say, or people just have a, a bone to pick with me and that they literally you know, have to come after me. And I'm, I'm not talking about just some of our Cowboy fans because we got enough of those that want to. But even 49er fans, the fact that I get 49er fans that take the time out to send me an email to try and tell me how stupid I am. Let me read to you guys this one. Let's see, where is it here? From a 49er fan, okay? From the Bang Bang Niner Gang. The title of the email is, Mark, this is a real teammate. It's a real teammate. Mark, Debo is a real teammate, unlike the money-hungry Cowboys. I'm going to add on their hoes, because that's, that's what you probably want to say. I'm surprised he didn't say hoes. Debo is a real teammate, like the Cowboy hungry uh, Cowboys hoes. And then in big, bold letters, Trent Williams ends holdout, finalized, rework, three-year, $82.66 million deal with the San Francisco 49ers. And if he wasn't finished there, he had to send a second one to follow up that said, report Debo 49ers restructure contract to create space. And so in his mind... He thinks that Debo Samuel said, you know what? I'm going to take some of my salary and I'm going to give it to you, Trent Williams, so you come in. 
See, the small mind thinks that way. What you have to understand about restructuring, restructuring, you're not giving a penny back. Not a penny, not a cent. It's all accounting, bro. When you restructure, because Lord knows we know about restructuring, the Dallas Cowboys signed Dak Prescott to his $160 million contract and restructured it immediately to get his first year's cap hit to $17 million. We didn't turn around and say, oh, Dak gave money back. No, he didn't give money back. It's the reason why we're at $55 million cap hit this year. Because you're just basically, when you restructure, let me let me explain this to you. I, I I know Henry. Henry, I know. I, I know Henry. Henry, I know. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try and break it down to you, okay? Because it's kind of like you can take some of that salary that you have right now. Let's, for the sake of argument, let's say it's twenty-five million dollars is your salary this year, okay? Twenty-five million, and let's say you've got four more years to go, right? What you do is. We're going to say, we're going to take $20 million of that $25 million and we're going to restructure it. Okay? You convert that to a bonus or guaranteed money. Okay? What happens then is that money can be prorated over the life of the contract. So we take that 20, divide by four, that's $5 million. So you take each year and you put $5 million towards it. For some reason, my camera froze. Camera froze. What the heck? Okay, there it's back. Camera froze there for a second. So you take that and you add $5 million to this year, $5 million to next year, $5 million to the year after, $5 million to the year after that. And you have the original five left. So five and five means now it's $10 million we have in cap space. I'm assuming as a cap hit. And we created... $15 million of restructured money to use on other people. That's how restructuring works. It wasn't that Debo said, here, let me write Trent Williams a check so he'll come back and play. That's not what happened, bro. So 49er fans, if you're going to try and come at me, at least understand what you're talking about. Oh, at least, at least understand what you're talking about. Because you could look at and say Deshaun Watson, Deshaun Watson, was he, oh my God, Deshaun Watson was a team player. They restructured his contract. He gave them money back for this year, $35 million. But guess what? That money just moved down the chain to $73 million cap hit next year and $73 million cap hit the year after. So take that as a learning lesson this morning. Uh, you know, y'all 49er fans, you kill me. You kill me. All right, so we are knee-deep in getting ready for our first game. We play on Sunday, of course. We're going to have four rookies playing today. Four. I don't know what's going on with this camera. It seems to like keep freezing. I don't know if it's freezing on your end or not. But Tyler Guyton, our number one draft pick. Cooper BB, of course, our, our makeup pick because we ended up moving back and get him. Um, Kalen Carson who's got Dion's number, and, of course, our linebacker, Martez uh, Latufu. I, I know I mispronounced his name, but that's the way I do things. Um, here's where you look at this and say, hopefully these guys play and play well. And also, I'm going to kind of add that uh, Mozzie Smith is going to be a starter this year, too. Mozzie and Osa Indigazua are our starting tackles. That... In order to succeed, you need to get some oomph from your rookie class. You need to have some guys that are instant impact on the field. Let me change this camera because it's freezing over here. I don't know if it's freezing over there on you guys or not. You need instant impact from those guys to help replenish the players that you lost. And the Cowboys are a team that is getting younger. In fact, I mean, really the only old area you have is Dak, uh, Cooks, and... Um, Zeke Elliott and D-Law. That, that's your old guys. Other than that, the Cowboys are actually becoming a very, very young team. And I really like the fa that, that fact of the, of the matter. The Cleveland Browns are like the third oldest team in football. They're actually getting long in the tooth and things. And hopefully the youth of the Dallas Cowboys will end up helping 
for them to continue to get over the hump, you know, that, that we'll be able to basically the young whippersnappers will be able to do some damage. Now, the elephant in the room, one Dak Prescott. And um, I had a, I had a friend, a little birdie whisper in my ear and kind of remind me and said what he thought that the holdup was on the contract, because everybody is kind of like, Wait a minute, Dak wanted a shorter contract before. This should be exactly what Dak wants, to get a short contract. He wants a longer contract? The Cowboys want to give him a short one? It's like it's almost like um, the old Star Trek mirror, mirror one. Okay, I don't know if you're Tracky fans, fans or not. I'm not a big Tracky fan, but I, my brother used to love it, and we had to watch it, of course. You know, it was live and everything. I'm that old. But Mirror Mirror was they went to this alternate universe where everything was backwards. Spock had a beard. He was evil and everything, right? And everything was reversed. And that's what this feels like. Did we go to an alternate universe in the last couple of days and find out that we got the the nice Jerry Jones and the evil Dak Prescott or something? Um, But the reason may be in the same way that the Cowboys wanted to put a clause in for Randy Gregory, in case he didn't perform or got busted for weed, because Randy Gregory couldn't stay off the weed, that the Cowboys, with Dak Prescott's ankle swelling up, you remember that. There was all the speculation that, oh my God, here it is, that in the back of the Cowboys' mind is trying to protect themselves to say, what if? There are some problems that develop as you get older. I know at 50 years old, it seemed like my warranty went up and all of a sudden shit just started breaking and not working the same way. I can't see a damn thing without glasses, really. And um, every day, it's kind of like it's easier to say what doesn't hurt than what does hurt. So in looking at that, they're looking at that and saying, do we know that his ankle is going to be okay three, four, five years down the road? On the DAC side of it, you're looking at it and saying, I want security going forward. Now, this is where it gets to be interesting, where I don't know what's in DAC's head. Because DAC could look at this and say, you know, they've always put it on me. They've always made me be the one to gamble and bet on myself. At this point in my career... I don't know that I want to continue to do that, that they all constantly want to say it's on you. And that may be the thing that actually gets them out of there. Um, My buddy Walker Wade says, you know, it seems like the Cowboys don't really want them. Well, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to be like Michael Irvin here. Let me see if I have a clip. This is what Michael Irvin said. Last season in Dallas. Let me say, hey, when I look at this man, Dak in Dallas and Jerry and Dak, however you want to put it, they're like, like this real old married couple who argues about everything and can't agree on anything. But they stay I, together. But but they'll never leave each other. So the answer is yes, Dak will be in Dallas, and I think he'll be in Dallas for a long time. This last thing, I am baffled on in this sense. You know, okay, the last contract. They argued about length of contract. I understand Dak wanted a short contract because of the collective bargaining agreement mm-hmm. ending and more money coming in. Um, this time around, it's the Cowboys wanting the short contract, from what I understand. And that baffles me. I, if I'm Dallas right now, mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to come back to the table with that. I'm, I'm trying to give him a five- or six-year deal, and I'm hoping this is the deal that w- walks him out the door. We've seen enough for Trey Lance. We've, we've seen... Enough of what Dallas has. Dak's going to finish his career in Dallas, and there's Mm -hmm. not not another quarterback that's going to upseed him or take over his job or take his position. That Trey Lance stuff, people will start sitting down now and putting it on the side. So, So I'm confused. Dallas, I think, is making a bad decision here because I say lock him down five, six years, and let's get this out the way and finish with this so you're not running by this mountain again. Yes. So that's what Michael Irvin believes. He believes that, you know, this thing will get done, that everything will be hunky-dory, and that, uh, you know, and so on. And the Cowboys' track record would be more of it's always darkest before the dawn. 
because it always seems like it's doom and gloom. Just people forgot two weeks ago how it seemed like CD wasn't going to get a deal. Well, he got his deal, and he's done. He's whole, and he's in camp. So let's go to the talking heads and see what nonsense they got today. All right, as we go, back to football. Okay. Cowboys, back to football, They finally yes. have a deal with C.D. Lamb. Dak oh, Prescott's God. going into the season Woo-hoo! opener. We anticipate without a new deal, and they're playing the Browns. So all this is a very big story for the offseason. How much it will impact the regular season is the question. Well, there's at least one person who thinks it's going to work out great. After Dak Prescott finished second in MVP voting last year, one NFL executive told our Joe Keller of Dak, he thinks, quote, I think he's going to have his bleep you season. Mm. Shut <laughs> everybody up and win an MVP. Yeah. You buy it? Well, it's going to be real tough to start that that um, bleep you season <laughs> across from Miles Garrett. Right. Who is going to be saying bleep you to anybody who you try to put in front of him. So that's a tough way to start. But I do think, I mean, Dak obviously has the ability to do that. Last year he showed that he could do something like that. But this new offensive line, that's where the question marks are. Absolutely. It's not going to be a problem just against people like Miles Garrett. I think it's going to be a problem all year long. It's nice to have CD. You throw him a mm-hmm. quick pass and he'll get you 35 yards every now and then. But this is not going to be the easiest season that Dak Prescott has yeah. ever had. Who, who, whoever said that, first of all, there's only one person who is going scorched earth, and that's on Jerry and Steve, or two people, Jerry and Steven, because mm-hmm. everybody else thinks he should be paid yeah. again and get it done. But after that, Couple concerns. You got a rookie starting left tackle, right? He's quite, but I think he's going to play against Miles Garrett. That that brings me concern. Tyler Guyton, yeah, is his Guyton. Name, yeah. So, so we're a little concerned about that. Let's also talk about the running backs, right? Like mm-hmm. they they are they are older is being kind. No, no, they have the best running backs. Ah, in the Greeny, in the same league. joke. In 2018, that's what they <laughs> have. They have Zeke Elliott and they have Dalvin Cook. Okay, so that's a concern for me because if you're going to take pressure off of Dak, it's through the run game. Right. And now it's like you're putting more pressure on Dak, asking him, thank God they got CD's deal done because it, it is a major – and, and again, you're putting all the pressure on him to go make these plays. The guy's played well. Like I, whatever – people say whatever they want, playoffs, I get it, all that. But the guy's a good quarterback. He's, he gives you chances to win each and every week. I just don't understand it. Yes. Uh, I, Yes, this is your game, right? Yeah. Oh, Kmart will be in Cleveland with uh, with. Oh, Tom lordy! Brady. I'm not sure if word has. She'll oh, be there Brady starting some shit. I'm gonna definitely watch because of Tom Brady. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, for those of you, this is an inside joke. Jeff was so put off yesterday. Yes. That I mentioned that it was Brady's first game. Just as being one of the factors in the game. Not that it's going to imp- impact the <laughs> outcome. Still it's still it, just, it. Just, it just raises the magnitude of the game. Right? I mean, it's Brady's first game. It's, oh, it's yeah. a thing. Okay, right? it's a thing, yeah. That uh, said. First of all, I put Cleveland on the map. Let's be serious. Okay. Yeah, but, 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 but open up that notebook for us here. You're so getting ready listen, for this. Listen, if you are the Browns, mm-hmm. you are feeling very confident playing at home. You're looking at your D-line against their O-line and thinking, advantage us. Mm-hmm. You're looking at your corners, you, you, your whole secondary against CD, and CD who has missed training camp. Right. And that's one of the things we're going to be looking at. Okay. How Does he come into this game and tweak something? That layoff, how, is he, because he's not. That, they're hoping that he tweaks. You know, um, I've, I've gotten to the point where I think they really. Uh, close through him, which is a different scenario than the Browns. The Browns want to bludgeon you. They want to be, t- right. they want to win time of possession. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so this is a matchup where I actually I actually picked the Browns in this one just because it, it's the first game they're playing mm-hmm. at home. And and I don't picked know the Browns what front. the Cowboys' offense will look like because da- there's I a would, lot of pressure on Dak. I mean, I don't know if I'd, I I think How there's so much. I don't understand why there's so much pressure on Dak. Dak is not a bad quarterback. They'll no, find a way to nobody's saying right, that. I know. I'm yeah. saying they'll find a way to score points. The other side, I can't say that much. That's so good, that's where I start losing confidence. I'm the Browns fan is. It's been since 2020 is the last time we saw Deshaun Watson consistently play above average quarterback. Like, he's been bad. We got to be honest average, about below he's, been, he's been bad. They don't have Nick Chubb. They still have that offensive yeah. line, and they have Cooper. So, I think it's, it's going to be a tough time for them to figure out how they're going to score enough points Thank you. to knock off Dak Prescott because yeah. he's going to score. And their starting left tackle is hurt, too. He, I don't think he's going to play, which means Kyle right. will move over to left tackle. And hasn't played that in 10 great, years. Which is not a great fit for pa- Parsons, that matchup. So, mm-hmm. there's some issues on both sides. I I, I agree. I, I, I like Cleveland as well, but I think Deshaun Watson, for, not only for this game, but for this season, you saw you saw a guy off the couch come in and bring yes. this team to life. Yes. You're paying this guy 
Seven million bucks a game. Oh, like, yeah. at some point, bro. You Seven million be dollars a, a game. Like, like you, you, you can't win in this league with a guy who not only is, is – he's below – he's played below average. And think whatever the off-the-field stuff is, the on-the-field stuff for a not guy really that you really. paid all this money to guarantee has been mm-hmm. detrimental to your football Has been ass-ass. Ass. Let's be real, real here. Bad spot. And traded so much oh, to Listen, get it. But they've just, done a good job not, with the roster of trying to get good oh, players around them. But it's Andrew Berry. But it, this isn't – every game is a referendum on Deshaun Watson and this deal from ownership wanting him front sure. office. People's jobs are on, like for the duration of this contract. People's jobs are on the line. It is not an exaggeration to say we are one more bad season away from this having to be listed amongst the worst trades in NFL history. Mm-hmm. It, it's that level of bad I'm when I'm you consider there. what they gave up for him and what they paid for him. But stranger things have happened than him having a good year, right? I, I mean, that, that's, I mm-hmm. he's proven he can do it. Well, yeah, but I got him off the couch and, 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 Joe Flacco. and, and, and lit we'll it up. Yeah, they, right. better, they better call Bill O'Brien, get him back in the building. <laughs> he's the about last... to do something good in, in it's, Boston it's, College. It, it's going to be interesting to see how this game works out because, you know, everybody's looking at the Cowboys saying they got no chance. Um, you know, they're, of course, saying, you know, Miles Garrett and crew against two rookies, which I'll give you that. But, you know, Dak Prescott, has been under siege many, many times before with problems on the offensive line. Uh, the question will be is, will Deshaun Watson going against the Dallas Cowboys and Micah Parsons and crew be able to do much where they have their left tackle out? We'll have to wait and see. But um, as a little bit, you know, as I'm going through, I told you guys I got my old channel back. Uh, my wife was asking me about, she's like, oh, I want the claymation ones where Joe Boo looks like he's really alive and stuff. I found um, one of the videos where we first started working on the house and we thought it was haunted because the window sash that I made, literally, I talked about the cemetery next door and it broke. But this was 2013, 2014 season review of Joe Boo and um, going back through this it's kind of like wow it's the things that Joe Boo has done has been great and so I want to say thank you to everybody who has been a fan of Joe Boo and this channel and I appreciate all of you guys and here we go (laughs) 